Welcome back to the next video, everybody. I'm finally back. This semester was pretty wild. Let's get into it. So this video is a result of a comment I got on YouTube. The title is, what do you really need to start learning for mods last year? Um, if you haven't watched yet, I made another video called the crazy amount of math you need for for mods last year. I would check that video out either right before or right after you watch this to see some more context behind why I made this particular video. Okay. In that video, I recommend internalizing to some degree an enormous body of mathematics, which is not only unreasonably large, but which I haven't even been through myself, to be perfectly honest with you, although I'm getting there slowly with time. Uh, so what gives, why would I make such crazy recommendations? Well, here are my secrets. Um, to be honest, that video is meant to be a little bit clickbaity. Only a little bit though. Um, I don't actually recommend learning all of the material found in that video before you start learning the proof of Fermat's last theorem, of course. Um, it would take you decades to do that kind of from first principles, if it's even possible at all. However, the purpose of that video was to give you most all of the things you should learn eventually in some total if your goal, goal is to have as few questions as possible when learning FLT and to simultaneously understand the maximal number of details both while and after reading the proof, okay? So it's like, you know, you should be consulting that list every, you know, so, se several months or so many years. You should be picking and choosing what you're learning, when you're learning it. You know, some of that stuff should be learned before you embark on the proof of FLT for the first time. Some of it should be learned kind of during, sporadically sprinkled throughout the initial journey. Uh, some of it should be learned after grasping FLT from like a high level, like bird's eye view. Some of it should be learned after a more in-depth analysis of the proof. Some when trying to nail down various details when learning various portions of the proof. Uh, some of the stuff's gonna have to be read more than once because it's hard material. It's like, and also some of it is just like, how well do you want to understand this, this proof in the long run? Like what level of understanding are you comfortable with? Okay. So the question in this video then, which was given to me by a subscriber is, what do I believe you should learn before attempting even a first kind of cursory journey into the proof of Fermat's last theorem? What are the actual prerequisites? Um, I will also discuss in this video at the end what I think about what you should black box before learning FLT. Okay, so um, the first kind of prerequisite, and this is going to be kind of annoying to a lot of you, but so be it. Um, you should really have gone through something at least equivalent to what I'll call a solid pure mathematics undergraduate curriculum, whatever that means to you. If that means, you know, you go look at five, you know, reasonable universities math programs and you self-study all those classes, fine. If that means you want to go formally get a bachelor's of, of arts or science and mathematics at an actual university, then go for it. Just whatever this means to you. I have no idea what I mean by this. Okay. It probably means that you should have completed something equivalent to coursework re required for an undergraduate degree in pure mathematics at an at least average level university, if not higher. And it also probably means that you took a few courses that were likely not required, but which were offered, like Galois theory, an elementary number theory course, an elementary classical algebraic geometry course, for example, and so on. Or maybe you self-studied these specific extra topics during your summer and winter and spring breaks. I don't know. I have no idea what this slide means. It means what you want it to mean, okay? It also definitely means though that you put effort into your studies, maybe even a little bit beyond what was required to just receive an A in each course. So, you know, you were taking solid notes, you were reviewing definitions, you were studying, you were doing a few extra problems beyond what was asked of you. You were asking questions uh, that you were led to beyond the specific theorems and propositions of the course, et cetera. Okay. And again, I have no idea what any of this means objectively, and I don't really care, and I don't really want to be more specific on this point in this video. But if you join my Discord link in the description, I'm happy to discuss this point with anyone in as much detail as you would like um, when I have the time. Okay. Uh, the second annoying prerequisite uh, would be you should have gone through something equivalent to like a solid pure mathematics master's curriculum at an average school or better. Whatever the heck that even means. I don't know what that means. That's nebulous, subjective, but I think we all sort of have like a vague idea of what it means. Yes, you can self-study. Yes, you can also go get the degree. Yes, you can do, do a mixture of both. I don't know. But again, uh, like why? So this would be to ensure in particular that your complex analysis and algebra, and maybe even like your algebraic topology just for intuition, are up to snuff, okay? 
It also, again, means whatever I mean by this slide, I definitely mean that you probably put a little bit more effort into your studies than what was required to receive an A in each course. Again, you know, you're taking notes, you're reviewing, you're studying, you're, you're asking questions, you're going to office hours, you're, you're digging a little bit deeper than what your course is asking you to do. And again, I don't really care to be too much more elaborate on this specific point, but you can just come talk to me on Discord if you want more detail about this as well. Okay, so now let's get into what you actually came here for. Provided you have that, that kind of solid foundation laid for yourself, I recommend you spend significant time with each of the following, I wrote eight here, but it should say nine topics. And I would actually recommend doing them in the order I list them. And I'll say a little bit about each starting next slide and I'll give you some more context as well. First of all, scheme theory. I would get your scheme theory kind of out of the way at the beginning, because it's gonna take a lot of time, and mental effort, it's gonna be very taxing. Um, and quite frankly, it's going to be easier to learn some of the other stuff if you have some scheme theory under your belt, just because scheme theory is so complicated initially. I recommend Bakil's The Rising Sea Foundations of Algebraic Geometry. I believe there's a new version of those notes out now. And I would also recommend Hartshorn's Algebraic Geometry kind of in addition to that rather than instead of. Um, okay, so I'll say a little bit more about scheme theory on the next slide. Then you should get into your algebraic number theory. I recommend Neukirch's algebraic number theory chapters one through three. Um, and what I mean by that is eventually you should understand the material in those chapters, but you might wanna learn this material first from a different or easier source like Ash or Sharifi's notes, so something like that. Okay, uh, Neukirch is a bit of a kind of a tough sell as a first read, all right. Then I like uh, Tate's thesis. So this is, you know, integrating R measures on locally compact abelian groups and stuff. Uh, this is a great bridge to class field theory. Uh, the material in Tate's thesis is probably best learned from Ramakrishnan and Valenza's book, Fourier Analysis on Number Fields. Then I would learn class field theory. I would learn that from Milne's notes, and I would fill in any gaps, which he admits he has, with your favorite extra resources like Neukirch's chapters four through six, which treats class field theory from a very formalistic perspective. I also like Sayre's books on Galois cohomology and local fields, et cetera. Uh, there, there's a lot of different books on class field theory out there. There's child risk, whatever you like. Okay. But I would also download Poonin's summary of class field theory because you're going to forget statements from class field theory or you're going to want to look up little details here and there. And he's got a nice, like, I think it's like eight page summary of, of the theory, maybe not even eight pages. So it's like, all right, algebraic geometry, algebraic number theory. Okay. Then what? Then um, elliptic curves. So I would read Silverman's The Arithmetic of Elliptic Curves. That's kind of the Bible of elliptic curves. And then I would read Silverman too. So Silverman's advanced topics in the arithmetic of elliptic curves. Uh, then modular forms. So I would read Diamond and Sherman's a first course in modular forms first. Then I would read Diamond and M's modular forms and modular curves, which is a pretty quick read. It's a set of notes. It does cover some things that Diamond and Sherman don't though, like integral models of modular curves, for example, which are very important in Fermat's last theorem. And then I would kind of as a warm up for FLT, a nice comparatively light warm up. I would take Snowden's online course on Majors Torsion Theorem. This will do a couple things for you. It'll allow you to, A, prove a theorem that you're going to need for Fermat's last theorem anyway, and B, take a lot of the stuff you learned in bullet points one through eight and kind of see how it all kind of starts to synthesize together to prove a larger kind of big, important, deep theorem, which is something you're going to be doing in FLT anyway, okay? After you've done all of this, I would pick up a copy of Cornell Silverman Stevens Modular Forms and Fermat's Last Theorem, and I would grab the Diamond Darman Taylor free notes online called Fermat's Last Theorem, and I would get going on your first cursory journey through FLT. Okay. Uh, so some comments on each of the things in that in that list of nine resources. First, I would plan to eventually read each one of those more than once, some of them as many as three or four times. I'm looking at you, Scheme Theory. Um, actually, I would probably read most of that stuff at least twice. Uh, scheme theory, you probably want to learn like three times. Okay. Uh, scheme theory, I would spend a calendar year on it with daily work. And I mean, seven days a week of work. And I would do as many problems as you can from the kills notes from Hartshorn's book and from anywhere else. Okay. I would ask questions uh, as often as you need to in Discord, on Stack Exchange, wherever. I would Look, have stack ex I would have uh, the stacks project at the ready. I'd have every other book on algebraic geometry downloaded and ready to go or gotten from your library or whatever, because you're going to have a lot of questions and you're going to struggle a lot during that first year. Okay. I would spend two semesters worth of time. So I, I would essentially take two semesters worth of courses. 
on the algebraic number theory stuff. So, so the Ash, the Sharifi, the, the Neukirch chapters one to three, that kind of stuff. And then I would spend one semester's worth of time on all the other stuff. So that's state's thesis, that's class field theory, that's Silverman one, that's Silverman two, uh, all of those kind of individual bullet points starting at bullet point number three. So, so three through nine should each kind of have a, a single semester's worth of time dedicated to each of them. I have no idea what I mean by that. I don't know what I mean by a semester's worth of time here. It means whatever you want it to mean. Um, if you can fit a semester's worth of work into a couple weeks or a couple months, go for it. Um, if you can do more than one of these at once and simultaneously put a semester's worth of work into each one of them, go for it. Whatever it means to you, I don't care. Okay. Um, if you want to group them up to finish faster, here are the groups that I might recommend. I mean, there are other groups that are possible, but here's one. I like scheme theory kind of by itself. I don't really think you want too many distractions while you're doing that. Uh, then I, I would recommend maybe like the algebraic number theory, so bullet point two, maybe with like Silverman one, and then maybe like Tate's thesis along with Silverman two, and then maybe like class field theory along with Diamond and Sherman. And then maybe you can kind of read Diamond and M, which is a quicker read along with your Snowden course, which will take up a little bit of time if you're trying to absorb the material correctly and thoroughly, okay? And of course, I mean, all this said, it's just about how much time you have, you know? And then last but not least, let me talk about black boxing. Uh, here are some results I recommend black boxing. So kind of ignoring and taking for granted if you haven't heard that term before, before your initial foray into Fermat's last theorem. I'm probably forgetting several of them, don't sue me. I, I thought of this list in about two minutes flat while I was talking to my wife on the couch. Like uh, there's more for sure. Okay, so I, I thought of eight of them, it looks like. Uh, first of all, Cariel's theorem on vanishing cycles. I, I call this Cariel's hard th theorem throughout my YouTube series. This is a very, very hard theorem. Um, it's hard enough just to kind of understand what this theorem says, let alone learn the proof. I mean, if you look at like the references in Cariel's paper, <laughs> the amount of material those references cover is enormous. Like it, it's just insanity. This might be the single biggest black box. The next biggest black box is definitely the Langlands Tunnel Theorem on the modularity of row E3. Okay. Uh, after that, the black boxes become uh, important to various degrees. It depends on your kind of tastes at this point. So Ramakrishna's thesis on the flat deformation functor would be something to black box, but you can eventually go through that for sure. Uh, Faulting's theorem, so his proof of the Mordell conjecture, although I would eventually learn this uh, from the book Arithmetic Geometry, for example. Uh, the Deline Sayer construction, so kind of uh, um, attaching to weight one new forms uh, uh, a Galois representation. You're going to need to know how to do that. Again, you can probably just learn that eventually, though. Uh, the Jacques A. Langlands correspondence, uh, that's just very difficult. It's also very long and time consuming to learn from scratch. I would probably black box that maybe permanently, unless you're particularly interested in FLT and you're an OCD completionist, you want all the achievements, right? Uh, seven would be Fontaine's categorical equivalence. Uh, so this is needed to prove some Galois cohomology results that Wiles uses in his proof of Fermat's last theorem. And then the open image theorem of Serre, which is a book followed by a paper. And all that is discussed in my other video that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Although I will say you should eventually grapple with the open image theorem sooner rather than later, because there are a lot of like isolated little lemmas and results and tools and techniques and concepts in there that you're going to need throughout the proof of Fermat's last theorem anyway. Okay, uh, so in conclusion, watch my other video now, if you haven't already, which covers uh, far more resources that you might want to go through in detail to learn the proof from Oslo's theorem deeply. Join my Discord, link in the description, ask any questions you want, and then just remember to have fun. Um, if I'm forgetting anything that you feel should have been in my top nine, or if I'm forgetting any resources that you like as alternatives to my top nine references, or if I'm forgetting any black boxes, go ahead and just comment below and we'll get a pin list going. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.